for this session is that we, after our last training session, we asked a few of the ladies if they felt enabled enough to run their own cohort or to start or create their own circles. And there was quite an overwhelming response from the ladies saying, even though they had training, they still didn't feel that comfortable and would like to have a follow-up session on it. So that's what this session is about. So we've got a quite a um, tight agenda, but not as, as much as full as normal. It's going to be a very, very practical session. I'm going to initially talk on um, how to create a circle. And then Rita's going to take us through um, generally just the sessions of the circle sessions and um, courageous leadership. And then we're going to have an actual circle. And then we'll come back with some discussion and then close. So we've got an hour. It's going to be a full hour, but I think it's going to be very valuable to all of you. So thank you once again for joining. Can I ask for a volunteer to read My Sister's Keeper, please? Which is the way that we start every session. No volunteers? I might have to nominate. Okay. <laughs> Revelina, you were yes. right. You were going to be the choice. <laughs> um, I will build my sister up, encourage her, empower her, and pray for her. I have no reason to talk about her, tear her down, be jealous of her, or to compete with her. I am going to stand behind her and help push her into her destiny. Thank you very much. And that is um, such, a, such beautiful words and so apt for our, for our group as always. Um, there we go. Okay, so we'd like to first of all talk about circles. And, and I think what's very important about the circles right now is, as I think I've mentioned before, our target globally for Girls for Girls is to reach 10,000 mentors and a million girls by 2025. And, you know, we have our set big cohorts that are currently run or been set for this year, which is the University of Johannesburg, University of Pretoria, etc. Those have all been set up already and they are basically in practice or about to start. However, we believe that to actually get to those kind of targets, we're going to have to start focusing far more on starting smaller circles within your environments. And I think those are the ones that where you can make the most impact in a very quick space of time. Whether it be in your school, whether it be in your high school, whether it be in your college. If you identify a group of women with a common purpose or common beliefs that you could actually start creating something within that environment, do so. If it's one circle of five to eight women, that is fine. Let's do it. All you have to do in terms of South Africa is sign a mem memorandum of understanding and then partner with somebody who's probably more experienced as a mentor or who's been through the process before, and then you can get going. And it's up to you to decide. You can either run it bi-weekly, weekly, once a month, um, but generally how you, how you run them is entirely up to you. We always say at least two mentors to a circle of five to eight women, so they're not difficult to set up and they're not difficult to go. I think obviously if you're doing it within an institution, you're going to have to speak to that institution to get approval to make sure that they are comfortable with you doing it within that institution and just give them an overview of what G4G is about so that they understand what objectives you're trying to meet. I think the clear thing about the cohorts is also making it clear to the ladies what it's about and what you're wanting to develop there and, and, and what your objectives are for the session so that you get their buy-in in advance. I think Making sure that you're getting commitment from the ladies is also so important. And that's, um, you know, if you come to one session or if you come to six, there's a big difference between what you, other gain, what you gain from them because each session runs into the next one. Each one develops on previous skills. So it is, it's only six sessions, but each one is really important to learn to develop and grow on them onto the next one. And I think then it's about identifying how you're going to do it. I mean, right now, of course, we're running all of our, our sessions online because that's all we are able to do. But maybe in the next few months, as things open up more, you can meet in a smaller venue and you can practice the social distancing. And because it's a small group, it won't be as difficult as trying to run a big cohort. So finding a place that's easily accessible for people and central to their location will work very well if you can, if you are able to do it. 
And then the other thing is all about planning. I think the way you get the commitment from the participants is that you let them know in advance what dates you're planning on you on doing it for. As long as you speak to them as well to get their input in terms of what will suit them. Maybe it'll be weekly, maybe it'll be bi week every two weeks or maybe once a month. Um, I wouldn't really suggest stretching it out longer than that because you want them to stay engaged and you want them to remember the content from the previous sessions. It's important that they are um, you know, learning and, and practicing those skills in between each session. And then at least um, just in terms of explaining in, at the beginning of each session what the purpose of each session is about and making sure that you're meeting those objectives within the session. And now you'll see when we actually physically go into the circles now and we start talking about the various principles and how we apply them and how we run them, you'll see how easy it is to actually get the conversations going and to develop the trust with the girls and take it from there. I think that's really about it. Unless there's anything that you want to add, if you need any reference to, you can actually look at your um, mentor's handbook. It's all on page three. There's a general, really good breakdown in terms of what to do and how to do. Um, and I think a little bit later, before we close off the session, we'll just talk about what, as mentors, we need to bring. You know, there's a level of commitment that has to happen from our side in making sure that we are there for our mentees. Um, there's a term, the tourist mentee, mentor, and we don't really want to be one of those organizations with tourist mentors. We want to have mentors who are really committed to the process. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Thanks, I'm gonna hand over to Rita. Thank you. You, you muted, Rita? I'm mute, yeah, I've just seen that. Um, are there any questions? Um, because this is the one time that for those of you who are thinking about not joining the, joining the big institutional cohort, so the UPs, UJs, um, Athlone girls, the, the, the ones who are thinking about having the smaller circles, are, are there any questions? Because it, it, it would be pointless if we have this session, then people still have questions. Any, or even take-homes or thoughts, anything that you guys would like to share? Um, I think on my side, it's, it's not a question as such, it's just a comment. Mm -hmm. So what is important actually from the beginning is to have an MOU. Mm -hmm. and partner with somebody who is experienced. Yes. That's Although my, my ultimate goal, because we are encouraged in, in my institution to do community development, mm -hmm. I would love to take it to the Valley University because there is nothing like that. Mm. And, and it's a matter of just getting permission mm -hmm. uh, once we open. But I can always talk to, to, to my HOD because I've got a good relationship with, with him mm -hmm. to say I have identified G4G mm -hmm. and what are the policies of bringing it to, to VUT. Yeah. But remember initially I did say I will join um, a UJ yes. so that I can gain experience from Wipuso and the rest. Right. So mm -hmm. remember that... Um, it, sometimes it takes long with institutions. For example, our experience with UP took up to, up to a year, Priscilla is on this call, up to a year to sign on um, the mm -hmm. MOU. But it's because we, went with the, we, we signed up with the entire university. Um, UJ did it differently. We signed on with the department. So it turned out to be faster. Boy Puso is also here. I believe she yes. can share you know, some of the experience. Now, in the lockdown period, we know that the universities are overwhelmed. So that's why it might just be easier that, yes, you're part of the UJ cohort. The moment you feel comfortable, which is normally by about session three, session four, then you can say, okay, why don't I try it with a small group of people within my community development program at Val? Maybe you already have a natural unit of eight girls or something that you, or maybe you know how you will advertise and then you can get it started. Um, but, or if you feel your university is running fast enough, then you can go with the institutional approach. What we are saying now is that the institutional approach should not be the reason that we are not making progress. Um, because a lot of institutions now are, they're overwhelmed. It, it's especially the educational ones. They're really just trying to figure out how to do the online classes. So the, 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 the door is open. You have many different choices. Think through it. We're here. You can always reach out to us. I would say go through the UJ, do about two or three sessions. It will probably give you a better idea in terms of what you're doing. And then you can come back to us and we'll see how to set it up. 
Okay. From an institutional perspective, Hi. there's a lot more coordination and arrangement. So it's important that I think that you do differentiate between the two. I think that the smaller session is quite easy to get up and going. The bigger ones are more difficult because you've got more people that you have to manage in terms of time and space yeah. and agendas and um, and planning involved. So that's just to be aware of that. Okay. Um, I see Grace has her hand up. Grace, you have your hand up? Yes, yes. Um, so personally, I would prefer to be within the institution. Mm -hmm. um, I think from the last time we had the initial uh, mentors uh, training uh, with um, with our other counterparts uh, outside of South Africa, um, I felt a bit disconnected from then to now uh, mm. because I wasn't too sure whether do I do we wait for Pretoria to to to, to provide us with the ladies that I will work with if mm. let's say I'm not ready to have a cohort. So I I sort of like felt like I wasn't too sure where do I fit in and, and how do I work. And I think um, because I'm working on another group where Val is a bit similar, um, is, is, is familiar with it, is that you're given a specific uh, individual to, 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 to work with as an MNT. Um, so here I felt a bit disconnected. I'm not too sure whether I'm ready for a cohort yet, but I'm happy to work within the institutional structure because uh, you know, uh, finding finding a group of people to work with in my work environment right now is just going to be a bit tricky, but I'm happy to work with the institution. So if there's a group of ladies that I can work with from a UP perspective, that's fine. And then I can trail myself towards a smaller cohort that I can work with over time. Yeah, and, and that's very logical and, and it makes sense. Um, that while the, you say you, you signed up for UP, yeah? you said? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so I felt like, yes. Okay, so, so I, I agree with you that, that there's been a bit of a disconnect. That's why we said to ourselves, you know, what else can we do? Because the, the, some of, some of the, the institutional cohorts are not picking off, uh, taking off. But there are many ways of staying um, in touch. We keep inviting people, you can come back for a refresher training. Um, okay. and, if, and this is why it's important to keep, stay plugged into the WhatsApp group. If there are people, say for instance, Gloria decides, you know, um, she wants to set up, but she actually needs four mentors. Um, we always encourage the balance, the mix between the more experience and the less experience. So it means she might need to get two experienced people, two less experienced people. You can always put your hand up so that that disconnect, you know, is, um, okay. is addressed. Yeah. And, and we'll okay. keep on mentioning if there are people who are starting up, um, what if we start with UJ and we discover that there's, there's another whole bunch of ladies who want to start up? What if we discover this is willing to start up? Then we'll, we'll, okay. we'll invite you guys. Priscilla, Priscilla is on the call from UP, who is your coordinator. Um, I think this is a call to action, Priscilla. There, you have many people who have signed up with UP. I think at one point we're going to have to discuss, like UJ, whether it's possible to transition onto the, onto the online. Oh, no. Priscilla, do, you need to, do you want to say anything? No, no. Okay, just I, I would like to say that we actually us half are starting up in August, so we are definitely on a mentor drive at the moment. Mm -hmm. So, if any of you are keen to be part of another active cohort from August onwards, please please message me privately. I would love to add you to our group. Okay, okay. that's excellent. So, Val is giving some solutions there. Um, any other questions? I see, I see a comment from um, Sheila. Sheila was saying, um um she's she's we know she lives with with the athlon girls wanted to attend the refresher session um thank you so much for us that's why we continue to hold these dialogues is that it keeps it fresh because we have also halted at um at athlon so it's great to have you back here so yeah okay so do i move on any other questions i don't see any hands up okay so th this this next session is really to give especially for those of you who came for the formalized training, that opportunity to go into a circle, especially those of you who have never been, you know, in the circle. So I think people like Pearl, uh, Rivka, yeah, <laughs> who, who have heard about it in theory and probably tried it a little bit in sessions, but never really did it. So the, what we did is, so by, uh, tell me if you don't have, if you did not receive the video, did you not receive the video on Courageous Leadership? So everyone has received the video. Does everyone have the guidebook now? 
Okay, everyone has the guidebook. So this is basically what we're doing. We're setting up a scenario for you. You're going to go into a circle and you're going to experience it. Now, the, the circles seem a little bit threatening, but there are a couple of things I want to say to you. One, all of you on this call have been trained and you're relatively familiar with the content. Maybe you've not had to impart the knowledge to someone else, but at least you've been walked through the trainings and you have access to the materials. You have access to, um, I think like we're saying, all of you have access to the guidebooks. Um, you also have access to the training recordings. So those of you who attended only the January session, when we subsequently held the online um, sessions, we, we have even more uh, material, recorded material to share with you. We have the, the January training um, that is on video. We have the April training, and then I think we have the one from two weeks ago. So you actually have access to the materials. You also shall not be alone. When you go into a circle, like we say, you will always work with a core mentor, okay? Um, secondly, it's really about, so rather the last bit is, it's about preparation and training. When, when, you, when, when you know you have a session coming up, um, it's important to get familiar with the train with, with the information, whether it's the training recordings, whether it's what's within um, the handbook. Think through the examples you want to give. Remember, we like to tell the stories. Where do you draw in your inspiration from? Is it from your story? Is it from someone else's story? Is it from the societal story? And then, of course, attend the prep sessions that are organized before every session. So there's really, what I want to do is give you comfort. You will be very well equipped. The fact that you're even here, um, it already means someone saw something in you to say, please come and be a Girls for Girls mentor. So be calm about that. I know it's always uh, threatening when you think it's someone's life that is in your hands because some of the girls come with very high expectations. But if you're well prepped, you've utilized the materials, you'll be good to go, okay? So, the, the, and the things I always ask to you um, to remember whenever we're going into the sessions, there is on page four of the guidebook, the basics of mentoring. So once again, the do's, remember to create a conducive environment. Remember to listen. Listen means that you actually stop, halt, and you actually put yourself in the, in the, in the, in the position of receiving the information and considering the information, not with the intention to respond, but to really try and understand where is this young lady coming from? What is her real issue um, over here? And then to facilitate the discussion based on concepts drawn from the video. It's so easy. All of us have been through some form of leadership training. It's very easy to start going off on a tangent and talking about all kinds of leadership. Our, our mentoring program is short, it's specific, it's for a specific amount of time. If you start incorporating elements that are beyond, you will find that then you will lose focus. So always try and stick to the principles um, within, within Girls for Girls. You can always augment, but please try and cover the materials that are within the guidebook. And then get the mentees to talk. I think that's one of the things we always tell people. I know it's awkward, especially on the online sessions. Because sometimes I ask a question, then there's that two, three seconds awkward, you know, while it's being transmitted. And then the person has to think, and then there's another two, three, you know, seconds that skips by before they answer back. But that's what facilitation is about. It's that you ask questions to allow the girls to give us their responses. It's not a training rota whereby we come in and we talk for 90% of the times. We really want to hear the girls' voices. So those are the do's. The don'ts, don't preach, don't lecture, don't speak at. In other words, don't be superior and act superior to the girls. And I always, we always say, don't take over the role of parent. Um, know when you have issues, flag them um, with us, and then we'll see how to, to help address them. And don't be dismissive of the mentees' views. Sometimes they have very different radical views. They are a different generation. Uh, they're, they are what? Millennials, someone said Generation Z, it had to be unpacked for us, I think, in the January training. So they do think differently and they, they challenge us. But maybe that's what also allows us as mentors to grow. We are seeing a different perspective. And that's where the listening kicks in, is that you're really trying to understand where is this person um, coming from? And so not to be judgmental. And then the final point, not to talk endlessly and to really listen. So we are going to run a circle. Again, in the same guidebook on page five, you're given um, an example of how to run a circle. So
So it tells you, as, as typically, if, especially imagine your first circle with the girls. You've never met them before. What's the first thing you do when you meet a human being? You try and, you know, calm them down, but you also introduce yourself. Um, so when you're going to run your first circle, especially the, the introductory ones at the building trust, you have to think through how are we going to do this? Are we going to have an icebreaker? What are we going to do? Are we going to sing? Are we going to ask people to say something short and sweet about themselves? Think through it and, um, and plan for it. So there are some very good guides um, that are given to you and we have uh, given you those tips. I think we spent a lot of time under building trust addressing those. But the practical session we are going to run today is the one on courageous leadership, which is on page six of the guidebook that has been set to you. So let me set the scene for you. This is the second time we're meeting the girls. You already have a circle that has been set up with them. You probably have a name and you've also agreed on what your rules are, yeah? Your norms um, of the group. At the last session, under building trust, homework was given. Every girl was asked to think of a leader, at least one leader, um, and why they are, to think about the reasons why they like um, that particular leader, okay? And what you were doing was setting them up to go into courageous leadership. So here we are, we had the session, we've had a brilliant inspirational speaker, She's left us charged. Uh, she has kind of told us her story and related it to the principles that are within the guidebook and that are within the video. Uh, the girls have watched the video. You have watched the video. We met two days ago to prep for this particular session and we're just about to go into the circles. Okay. Is that okay? Are we clear? Okay. So I'm going to break you into, Val, we are only 18, we're only 18 people on the call. So I, I don't know how many groups to do. Should I do four? Yes. Okay. Okay. So Val, clear any questions you have while I do the, the splitting. If anyone has any questions, please raise them. Just in, um, they're also asking about whether there's options of downloading the videos. Unfortunately, at this point in time, there's not because um, the videos are actually copyrighted. So at this point in time, we can only provide links to the videos on YouTube. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, let me just see what other questions there are. I think that's about it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so do we start with the feedback? Um, we hear from room number one. Oh, that's mine. <laughs> who, was, who is representing your group? Um, I was going, I will give the feedback, but I, then I'd like Pearl to share a little bit. Just let me say one thing then, and then Pearl, please share how you felt as being the mentor. But um, one thing I did point out to uh, all the mentors in my group is instead of you prompting questions, um, once the conversation started, was trying to get the mentees to ask each other questions and to share what their thoughts and opinions on what somebody else has said. Um, so I think it allows you to step back as a mentor and let the mentees speak as much mm. as possible. Yeah. Uh, Pearl, want to share your experience as a mentor? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so this, <laughs> this was my first exper experience, really. So I joined in, in January and I've not had the opportunity to uh, sort of be part of a, a, an actual practical cohort. And um, I was actually quite anxious because I thought, okay, so I, I was looking forward to doing this physically, sort of face to face. And now mm -hmm. the idea of having to do it online was kind of throwing me off a little bit. But I must say, um, it, was, it was lots of fun. It, it, it really was a lot of fun and I, I, I have seen that it is getting the people to be comfortable enough to share. That once you do that, once you break the ice and you get the people comfortable enough to share, that, you know, the flow of energy, the flow of information sort of just flows, you know, uh, through everyone. So, I mean, I, I think I'm feeling a lot more confident now to do it. Uh, Ginello gave me really good pointers. I really like the idea of getting the mentees to ask one another questions because that gives them an opportunity as well, even without you, to be able to pick up the phone and say, you know, wh whatever it is, to still be able to share amongst them in between sessions. So, I think uh, for me, um, I'm feeling way better 
way more confident and, and I really enjoyed uh, being with the ladies and, and the information and the guidance I got from Kinele. So thank you. <laughs> Good. Um, um, Gladys? Breakout room two. Gladys? Yes. Oh, I'm on mute. No, I'm not. No. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, so I was in breakout room two. I'm going to just give quick feedback and then I'm going to ask um, Shayla, not Shayla, Sheila to please share. She was the chosen mentor. Um, the one thing that um, I noted from us was the timekeeping. Um, given that we only had 20, 20 minutes, I didn't feel like the people who came towards the end had enough time to talk. And maybe this is where maybe the mentor would encourage, you know, a way to find the, a way to find the, uh, to tell the mentees to wrap up, not wrap up, but like, you know, to keep it short so that everybody has an opportunity and it's more interactive. And then, um, Obviously, I think also to be good to encourage, you know, each, to encourage, each, encourage each others to have a better working system so that we can easily hear and can be more interactive. So it, I would encourage people to just check on their systems on their side. And other than that, I think it was a good session. So I'm going to hand over to you, Sheila. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Gladys. Um, it wasn't my first time to run a cohort. Um, at, with the Athlone Girls High School, we met the first time and um, we did session one and two. And then we met a second time to do session three and not enough mentors arrived. And a few seconds before we broke into our circles, <laughs> Kanilo told me that I was going to be running the circle. Um, so I was a lot more nervous then. Um, what I find, sorry. Sorry. Um, what, what I find um, helps is that you have the you have suggested questions and points of discussion, which you can use as a guideline. Often it doesn't run completely according to that because as people start to share, then other questions come up and other discussions come up. But I have confidence. I had confidence the last time and again today because I could refer to those just to kind of get the conversation flowing. And yeah, I think I should have managed the time better. Um, Munashe didn't get as much time to speak as everybody else, but I'm really glad that everybody opened up and did share, you know, pertinent things. So thank you, all of you. <laughs> Good. Thanks. Um, group three. So I'll also just give a quick overview. So there were two things that I noticed from ours. Um, the one was just Remember that you've got the time, besides the time management, you've got objectives that you have to reach within that session. What happened is our session that we only really started talking about the courageous leadership and what those were. We didn't get to the building your village and um, investing in your information gathering years, which are key concepts to this session. So as mentors, I'd say just be very clear about what your objectives are and what has to be covered within the circle so that you get through all the key points. Otherwise, you just touch on the subject and you don't get into the very depth of what it's about. So we only managed to um, tell a little bit about the courageous leadership. And the other thing is just about sharing stories as much. Uh, I think um, we, we were, the girls and the ladies we were excellent at asking questions, but a little bit about your own story also allows for that vulnerability, not your entire life story, but a, like a story where who you admired or what you, who you cared about that the girls can then kind of relate to is very important. I'm going to ask um, Priscilla, what is your experience as mentor? How did you find it? <laughs> wow. Um, for the first time to run my own cohort, my small little cohort, so that it was a bit challenging, but it was exciting because at least now I know what to look forward to. And like what Val said, I think in future, now we'll know how to plan and break down the topics for discussion and also lead the girls through to that. And whilst we lead them through to that, I think it's also important to also give them the platform to ask the questions, take it from one mentee to the next, like they did in group one. I think that's very important because then that will give the mentees the room to sort of know that they, they are in control and this is their session and they're in control of their lives and they can be courageous leadership leaders in the near, near future. So being a mentor was great. Good. 
And then we have uh, breakout room number four. I was there. Violet, do you want to um, comment as the mentor? And then um, I think it's Gloria who is going to give um, feedback as the participant. Violet? Yes. Yes, I hope I'm not breaking. We can hear you. Okay. In our group, likely or unlikely, <laughs> our um, mentors actually asked us to <laughs> to be the mentors uh, instead, and they were all mentees. And uh, I think we've managed to touch all the points, um, but it will be good if we, uh, uh, they give us, you know, a feedback and what they think uh, as mentors they can do better. Yeah, so we, we had a bit of a coup. They refused absolutely to be mentors. They insisted on being <laughs> <laughs> mentees. And that was, I think that threw us off. I was prepared to be a very difficult mentee and, and my role got taken um, away from me. So let's hear a bit from, from uh, Gloria. Is Gloria here? Gloria? It's a children. Is it me? Is it me with the problem? No, no. Okay. Um, Gloria, I think has frozen because I can see that she lost her tip. Gloria. Okay. So Fina uh, or Sharon, one of the two of you have to step in and and give your experience from group four. Group four, because Gloria's she's actually left now. Okay, I'll give my bit of yeah my bit of um experience. Um, one advice is don't go to a session without being prepared. And if you need to watch the video, you must watch the video before you go to the session or else you'll be exposed. Um, but we had fun. Um, um, it was quite interesting. I learned a lot, even though I did not manage to watch the video. From the information that I gathered, it, it actually was interesting. And I don't think I'll be afraid to be a mentor next time. Okay, so Gloria is back. Gloria? Okay, yeah, like uh, Violet said, we, we actually we were not comfortable to be mentors from, from the beginning because we wanted the experienced ones to show us how they do it. So we volunteered to be mentees. What was interesting is we, we introduced ourselves to know each other very well. And then the mentors then started asking us questions about the homeworks that were given and what were the lesson learned from from the video so that was touched discussed and i think all of us we learned from that and i think hearing from other people it's it's, it's also key that let the mentees take the platform and, and let the mentees be the ones that really ask questions in our mm. group. Mm. So we had the challenge of two of our three mentees that hadn't watched the video, which you're all going to run into. And it puts you in an awkward position because now we had a Gloria who she, she wrote us, she told us everything that was in the video. And then we had two other mentees that they were now just clutching on. So we had to think very quickly on our feet and say, um, do you remember we asked you to think about a leader? And, and then try and, and manage. You're now dealing with people at two different levels, which is a, a classic thing that happens. And, and it, it actually then puts a lot of pressure um, on you because I don't know whether the, the mentees noticed it immediately threw us off because we now had, Violet and I had to think, okay, what do we do? We're, we're, you know, we're dealing with someone who knows about leadership and then others who don't. So be very aware about that. Um, mm -hmm. In future, one of the things we are really trying to, to work on is to make sure the girls watch the videos before they come into the sessions. Um, because without that, then you have a problem. But normally you're helped by the inspirational speaker because the inspirational speaker has then watched the video and has spoken to the point. So you're in a slightly better position. Uh, but always as a mentor who is running a circle, do your utmost best. We set up WhatsApp groups, make sure the girls have watched the videos or learn strategies as to how to get the girls to watch the videos. They can log in early. We've done it, for example, at, uh, at, uh, at UJ. 
where people come in early, they watch the video so that when we start off, we all start off at, at a common point, yeah? So that's a very big um, lesson that we, we learned the painful way. Okay, cool. So um, I think hand it, handing it over to Valerie to, to close. Or any all other right. comments? I don't know whether there are any final comments. Otherwise, yeah. Any questions or comments, girls? Hands up, if anyone has. All right. Um, so I just wanted to close off in terms of what it means to be a mentor. I guess um, you've all experienced it firsthand now, and, and, and it is that first time is very scary. But honestly, it's not as scary if you have prepared for the session. I can't tell you enough how important it is to be very clear about having watched the, the material yourself and knowing what the outcomes of the session have to be. If you are clear on what you have to do in each plan and each part of the, sec of the session, you will find that the session runs a lot smoother. You, you can engage more easily because you know the material and you can and you can and you have the conversation that you need to have. So preparation, preparation, preparation is key. We unfortunately do have a few mentors who arrive and then they just want to be, you know, they just want to sit back and watch. And you can't be a what you can't be a spectator mentee, mentor. You've got to be somebody who actually participates and helps. That's why we're here for the girls. I guess it's part of your commitment, right? And like we say, we don't want tourist want tourist mentors. If you're going to be there, you're going to be there for each session. That's what the building trust is about. The ladies, the mentees must feel like they can trust you, and they can only do that if you are building a relationship with them. And like I said in the beginning, you build from each session. The tools you use, what you discuss, as you build those relationships, that makes and helps the messages get through a lot more easy. And every time the circles get more and more, they get easier because the conversation flows easier. And by the end, it's hard to leave the circles because you've got so much to say and there's so much discussion. So um, really staying committed and being there for each session is so important. Um, and then obviously the things that we talked about, about being a parent, not talking all the time, it's the mentees' voices that count, not our voices, it's the mentees' voices that count. So hear their stories and listen for their stories. Um, I mentioned already being clear, on, being clear on what the objectives are, and then also not, dis not being dismissive of anything that any of the mentees say. You know, they, if they do speak up, it's taken a lot for them to speak up, so listen and ask, delve, find out what they're actually trying to say. It's not just about what the, the initial words that are coming out. There's an idea behind it that needs to be expressed. So even if you might not, you know, don't bring any judgment or bias to it, be open and delve and ask queries and questions. So what have our um, Ugandan ladies talked about a description, an acronym for um, mentors, and they said present was the acronym. The P was for being physically present, and that's what we've discussed already, being there for the girls. The R is to be able to be, relate to the girls, um, to being able to, the group that you're talking to or the group that you're with, are there girls, that, the, the, the issues that are facing them, are there things that you can talk about, that your mentors, other mentors can talk about, making sure you can relate to them. Bring energy, I mean, bring that enthusiasm, bring that excitement to it. The girls love that, you know, they love being, like, that's what, what also creates the buzz around the session. Being social, um, not a spectator, contributing as much as possible. Even financially, or with skills as well. The ease for empathize, being able to empathize with what the girls are saying. And the end is being global, like being somebody that the ladies, the girls can respect because you have principles and your behavior is exemplary. And then the last one is being tolerant and tenacious, but still adaptable. So I think that's going to be going up on our social media pages one of these days. So look out for it. But I just want to say thank you. We've, we're eight minutes over. Thank you for your for your time this evening. Very, very much appreciated. And we hope it's been beneficial. Just one one last thing. Remember, there's nothing that stops you from sharing these this this information that you have at Girls from Girls girls for girls with any of the young people in your life so if you really feel you want to practice nothing stops you from getting four or three of your nieces you know you're the younger people um and pick a topic you know that you can you can talk and then just start getting used to it it's something one of the ugandan mentors told me that she's done she started working with her nieces so you have the material you don't get charged for it it gives you very good practice ground think about different ways that you can practice it um, with people my last comment is use the tools. 
you've got your sisterhood, you've got the network, you've got yeah. the village, you've got the G4G, but there's so many people here are so willing to help at any point in time. You've got the handbook, you've got the um, information all over, you just need to ask. The videos are all on the YouTube, on our YouTube channel, so just go out there and do it. It's, um, we're excited to see what you come back with afterwards. Thank you so much, ladies. Bye, everybody. Just a question. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, because we as mentors, we get a guidebook. Mm -hmm. What about the mentees? What do we give them? They've also got a they've also got a mentee guidebook. So it's it's got oh. kind of similar content um, to to what you have. Obviously portrayed differently, but like the four key points coming out of courageous leadership will be there in their book. And it also has space for them to write notes. And we always encourage them um, in the session um, to write notes. So sometimes one of the strategies we do is we, for instance, the question around like, do you have a mission? Or who is the leader you admire? Instead of just asking for them to tell you who that leader is, you can just say, take two minutes, think of a leader you admire and write down why you admire it. Because that's what the books are for. Yeah. Mm. And there's a, there's the reason why I'm thinking, sorry, go ahead. Okay. Now, the reason why I'm asking, as you said, Val, that, you know, you, we can start with our nieces and all that. Now, is it possible that, uh, because I've got a group of young girls that I think I can start with, uh, where my daughter goes to school, I can encourage her to, to, to do that. Now, is it possible to have both, like, the mentor and the mentee's guide? if it's possible, or should I buy that? Just to start and see whether it will go well or not. And I can video that and share it with you. So you, you want to do this for practice purposes or you, you're actually thinking about starting up a cohort? Look, it's about starting by practicing okay. at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> remember, remember, I'm gonna go through UJ. Yes. So I have to learn first. Yeah. But I was thinking, practicing, you know, it it helps. Okay. So, so that I can see that you know what I can do it well because I've got these young girls that have ideas, yeah. especially with what is happening currently. Yeah. Now what I've learned is because my daughter is the head of transformation at her school. So she normally tells me a lot about the issues that they're going through. So then I said, mm, maybe I should start with these young girls because I know all of them. Yeah. It's about six of them. They are very close. Mm -hmm. you know? Then I should bring them in. You know? So that's, so, that's my okay. thinking. The fastest way, sign an MOU. Because once you sign an MOU, you then have a memorandum of understanding. You then have access to all the materials. Oh, in other words, okay. you, you have the legal basis on which to share the videos um, share the mentee handbook and all those things. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it can be done with you or Val? With, yeah, because it's G4G. Either of the directors will sign. Val is a director. I'm a director. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Nice. Thank, Thank you, ladies. Have a beautiful evening, further and stay warm and safe. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 B